Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanna mount this European elk head that I've been packing around for so many years now. Right there on my garage. That's where I'm gonna put it. Finally, let's get this thing on the wall. So here we are, March 25th. See this? It's snowing around me. I'm so over this. This morning we actually had about an inch. You could see maybe some fresh snow behind me right there. That's what we had this morning. <sighs> so done with this. Where is spring? Where is summer? You know we go from winter in Wyoming. We skip spring. We go to construction season. Winter, construction season. So just another quick update for people out there. I hope everybody's doing well during this crazy time, this pandemic, as we are calling it with the COVID-19. I'm officially teleworking. I am working from home now. Um, we're pretty much quarantining ourselves right here at the house. Maybe on the weekend, we'll go out for a hike up in the woods, just the family and I, but that's how it goes. So right now, I hope everybody is safe, healthy, I hope that these videos gives you a little bit of entertainment during this time. All right, so as I mentioned, talked about, I want to put this European elk mount up on my garage wall right there. Right up above the light. Oh, it'll look so good. And here it is. So this was a really cool bull that I have been packing around with me. Five point, a Colorado bull. Kind of give you some different looks at it here. I've been packing this around since about 2004. And the reason I've been packing it around is I had no real place to put it at the time. We moved a few times. You see it's nice and white and it's still nice brown on here. Like I said it's from about 2004, but it's just been in the rafters of the garage. It just keeps moving with me. And I decided to finally do something with it and get it mounted. Well, the story with this too, get into this before I get it, everything moving on to the wall here. This might be like a two part video here. Um, so this was a Colorado bull I had, I got back in about 2004. It was the first time I ever took a hunting trip outside the state of Oregon where I lived. And so it was a guided trip, a big ranch. I mean, I don't remember how big it was. We never saw all the corners of this ranch. And uh, this was a very successful hunt. So I had an, a bull tag and a cow tag on this hunt. And it was either the second or third day that we were there. And we were sitting on some rocks. It was a nice sunny blue day. Of course, this is 2004. So I was not packing video equipment around with me. If I find an old Polaroid picture of this thing, maybe I'll post it up here and show you the success we had on this trip but we don't really have video. Um, but we're sitting on these rocks this one afternoon, nice and sunny, middle of the afternoon, and here come this bull with maybe 10 to 15 cows with him. And he was running through the property, kind of coming our way, kind of at an angle, angling away from me. We estimated it around 250 yards. I got propped up on a tree with a good rest. And I was looking at them and as they're running away, there was gonna be this one spot. I was like, okay, this is gonna be the spot on top of this ridge where he's gonna be open. He's gonna be a perfectly good broadside. Let's, let's take the shot. And uh, they were in about a half trot at that time. And uh, at that moment, and I took the shot and I probably did that little second blink there. He was gone. Where'd he go? And the guy that was with me said, he's down. He went down, he went down the other side of the hill. Like, yes, all right, he's down. And uh, that's what we knew. So, and the herd took off really fast, running up the ridge, took off. They were just, they kicked another gear in, phew, gone. And they went behind some trees and some timber. I think down there in Colorado, I think it was a lot of that scrub oak or something. Not but 20 seconds later, here they came, right back over the top of that ridge came right down to us and we were on a fence line. They ran down to this fence and they were about a hundred yards down the fence. And we were getting ready, okay, I'm gonna take the shot. Well, they turned right up the fence line. They ran right up that fence line that we were standing on. 
it was intense. And this whole herd, as they kept coming up, it was like, okay, what am I going to do? I was on the fence. And, uh, man, I put my crosshairs down the lead cow, pulled that trigger at about <laughs> 30 feet away. They didn't even notice that we were standing there, and she went over. So within a span of 30 seconds to a minute, I had this bull down and a cow. Unforgettable experience. I remember it like it was just today. It was so cool. So cool. Um, yeah, so that was that Colorado hunt. That was memorable for me going down there with my dad and, and doing this hunt, getting this bull. And at that point, I hadn't killed a lot of bulls, a lot of elk at that point. I had another small elk, I, bull elk I'd killed. This was probably my biggest one to date then. Um, so yeah, it was just a really, really neat experience to get this, this bull. So before I get this bull and I start getting the mounting hardware and everything ready to put it up on that wall there, um, one thing I wanted to do was measure it. I don't know how what this thing scores. It's only a five point bull, I bet you. I'm gonna take a guess, take your guess right now because I'm gonna do the measuring. Two, 200, plus or minus 50. <laughs> So I'm just going to roll the tape out here. We're going to get our measurements done and uh, be curious. I've been packing this thing around since 2004 and I don't know what this thing scores. So that's be kind of neat. So what I got with me here is a, uh, from the Boone and Crockett. Here's my scoring sheets. Get this done. There's my tape measure I'll use. So we got to get this filled out. And the first one was number of points on each antler. Five. Straight five. Number on the right was five. Number on the left was five. And then we got to go through the tip to tip spreads, greatest spread, inside spread of main beams, total length of all abnormal points. It's a lot to do on this. Then you start measuring all the G1s and all the way up to G5 only for me. No G6. And <laughs> no G7 if present. Darn it. Snowing. Are you kidding me? March 25th. Go through the circumferences, get that all done. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started on this. Maybe I'll do some speed ramping. Don't have to sit here and measure this all out. It's going to take me a little bit of time. But uh, I'll do a little speed ramping here and we can get this measured. <laughs> that this uh, nice little bull scores out around 289. That's probably plus or minus 50, you know, give or take. 289. Now I know. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for watching. The part two of this video will be mounting it onto the wall. Um, we'll see how that, that goes. Wish I had a taller ladder. 
But we'll get it done. We'll get this done tomorrow, I hope. And uh, so stay tuned for part two of the video. Hit the subscribe button. And thank you guys very much for watching. Stay safe out there. And until then, we'll see you next time.